my name is Morgan and I am a neuroscience researcher. I am making this series called Jobs in STEM to hopefully help out the people who are majoring in biology, psychology, physiology, all of the ologies, and their parents are going, what are you going to do with that degree? What are, what could you possibly do with a biology degree other than be a medical professional? Which listen to me, I am not knocking medical professionals. I think it's very obvious right now how badly we need doctors and other medical professionals in the world. We desperately need them. This is also for people who maybe love learning about the human body, love learning about animal bodies. Maybe you don't want to be a vet, but you love learning about animals. There's a lot of things that you can do with those degrees, but they're not really advertised out there because like I said, doctors are super important. Doctors are prestigious. Doctors are needed. Doctors make a lot of money. And also for people like, I grew up in a really rural town. The only scientist that most people interacted with was a doctor. So that's what people knew you could do with a biology degree. There are other things that you can do, and this is to help inform people of those things. So I'm sure I won't manage to make a comprehensive list because there's a lot of different jobs, but I'm going to go over the jobs that I know about. If there comes a time where the current pandemic is no longer an issue, I would love to interview people who are in some of these jobs to help spread the word because I've only held a few of them and I only know about a few of them. So hopefully this will help you if you're trying to figure out what to do with your degree. If your parents like mine were asking you, what in the world are you going to do with that biology degree other than become a doctor? So today I'm gonna to talk about one of your options, which is one that I've held so I feel qualified to talk about it. And that is either a research technician or a research assistant, also known as a lab technician or a lab assistant. Now those are four different words for all essentially the same job. The sort of unspoken definition between the two is that a technician is there more for their technical skill set and to run specific technical equipment, and that an assistant is more there to come up with projects and to help with the projects. I did both in my job. Most people will do either, both, all, whatever. I have not seen an actual difference in practicality, but that is like the, the technical differences between the two. But they all do the same thing. So what do they do? What does a research technician, lab technician, research assistant, lab assistant, what do they do? And the answer is everything. <laughs> they do everything in a lab. So typically these jobs that I that I know of, I'm not saying they don't exist in other fields, but the ones that I know of are typically in like bench work labs. So um, maybe you could be one in a field work lab. I don't know that for sure. It's something to look into if you're interested in field work. I do bench work. Um, and the, what that means is that whenever you picture a scientist in a white lab coat working at a lab, looking through a microscope, that's what I do. Field work scientist, go out in fields and collect data in fields outside of a building. That's not for me, but that is for some people and I'm not knocking it. So in these bench work labs, uh, typically a lab assistant will help with whatever project is going on. So a lab assistant is sort of there to do everything. Sometimes a lab will have a lab manager and a lab manager does what you would think, manages the lab, orders things, takes care of, makes sure that everything gets clean, makes sure everything gets put back where it belongs, like does all of the technical stuff. But some labs don't have that. And labs that don't have a lab manager, typically the lab assistant also does what a lab manager would do. So you order things that the lab needs. You, if an experiment has been planned, you make sure that everything in the lab is ready for that. If there's something that other people in the lab need help with, you do what they need help with. So you end up doing a lot of different things. Whenever I was a lab assistant, I did surgeries, I took care of our mice, I genotyped mice, I cleaned things, I ordered things. I did everything you can think of in a lab. Um, something that's important to think of if you're looking into being a lab assistant is what lab you're going into. Because I was really fortunate to have someone who knew that I wanted to become a graduate student and that I wanted to become a PhD. And so they worked really hard to help me achieve that. And so they helped me, I was allowed to design my own experiments, which is not something that lab assistants are typically allowed to do. So like I said, make sure that you know whose lab you're going into and if they're going to let you do something like that. It's also important to know the lab environment that you're going into. Some labs are huge and have four or five lab assistants, and that is for some people. 
personally not for me i like a smaller lab so i like a lab where there's only maybe one lab assistant maybe it's all graduate students um so keep that in mind also don't be afraid during your interview to ask if the lab has enough funding for you because lab funding fluctuates wildly and as soon as the lab runs out of money to pay your salary you might be out of a job and you might have to search for a new one so if job security is something that's important to you don't be afraid to ask these questions so how much does a lab assistant make great question typically a lab assistant is someone with a degree so you should have your bachelor's degree at a minimum um so you get paid like someone with a bachelor's degree i personally am not afraid of sharing this i personally made twenty nine thousand a year and that's a pretty middle salary for a lab assistant i knew a few people who made less than i did but not many uh, and i knew some people who made upwards of thirty thousand. it depends on what lab you're in and where you're at so i was this in a state where the cost of living is very low so twenty eight thousand is plenty to live go out purchase things that i don't need get tattoos and piercings like i was not wanting for money in my state and that is the way that it should be if you are a lab assistant and you have a degree so if you live in a state where it's more expensive to live you should expect a higher salary than i did what are the qualifications to be a lab assistant uh, qualifications like i said typically you have a degree usually they will expect that you have had some lab experience so you will want to have done some research in undergrad even if it's just a year or a semester they just want to know that you know what it's like to be in a lab because being in a lab is not for everyone and they want to know that you have the potential to learn different technical skills not that you have to have those skills already but that you're willing to learn them Typically, you apply specifically through the lab that you're joining or through the university of the lab that you want to join. Um, so I personally applied directly to the person that I was under, and that's a pretty common experience. I have heard of some places where you have to apply through the university, but not many. So something that's important to do, like I said, is to research your lab. Not only the type of lab that you'll be joining, but also what they research. You don't have to join someone who does exactly what you want to do for the rest of forever because this is a pretty temporary position and i'll get on to explaining that um so the chances that like you're in it for a year or two and then you leave and go and join a different lab are pretty high so they don't have to be doing something like you're super passionate about that's exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life but you should at a minimum be interested in what they're doing because if you're not interested you're just gonna be bored the whole time and that's not fun for anyone so like i said this is a pretty temporary position what does that mean? A lot of people are only lab assistants for a year or two. This is typically a stepping stone onto furthering your education. Now I say typically because that's not always the case. I have met a lot of people who were lab assistants as a career and that was their whole life. If you want being a lab assistant to be your career, you should mention that to the person whose lab that you are joining. No matter what you wanna do for the rest of your life, you should mention that to the person whose lab you're joining. But a lot of labs will expect that you're only there for a year or two. So if you want to be there for longer, you should express that to them because that's not the expectation. A lot of labs are pretty open to it. The only thing, like I said earlier, is that funding can fluctuate wildly. And so even if they want to have you there for the next 10 years, they might not have the funding to keep you there for 10 years. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's also people who are lab assistants as a career and switch labs every two years that's a possibility also if you're interested in doing that it does keep things pretty interesting i can see why they would do it it's not personally for me because i wanted to get my phd and have my own lab if you're a lab assistant you will be constantly joining labs you won't be able to have your own so what are the options other than becoming a full-time lab assistant a lot of people do it as a stepping stone to get their phd because a lot of phd programs really look for someone who has a lot of lab experience and if you had a full-time position in a lab that is something that PhD uh, schools really like and PhD programs really look for in a candidate. It also shows some dedication to the field because you went out and looked for a job first, you made sure that it was the right path for you. Also working in a lab before getting your PhD, you're working under someone who has their PhD. So they're able to help you 
with your journey if you join a good lab. Of course, there's some awful labs out there that treat their lab assistants horribly and that um, you're basically just like a little teeny tiny worker bee to them. But if you join a good lab, they will mentor you, they'll help you with your PhD interview, they will help you with your resume, and they will help you get into graduate school, and they will help you um, understand what you're getting into because not a lot of people who don't have like maybe family members who have a PhD don't really understand what grad school is really like. Everything that I just said also applies for people who want their masters. I'm sorry, I'm just really focused on PhDs because that's why I'm going for it. But if you want your masters, you are valid. You can also be a research assistant and then become a master's student. I've also met people who did research assistants as a stepping stone to other graduate type programs like becoming a doctor. If you want to become a doctor, being a research assistant on a medical campus is a good idea. Um, the campus that I was on specifically was a health science center campus and so they did have a um, med school attached to them and so if you were a researcher there for like a year you were sort of preferred over other candidates. There was also a person in my lab who wanted to be a dentist and she got into dental school. I don't know whether or not being a research assistant helped her but she got in and it was a way to get paid full time in between. There are also people who are research assistants who want to become uh, vets and animal behaviorists because you do learn a lot about animals whenever you're working with them for research. There's different labs who work with different lab animals. So you might be working with rodents. That's an interesting skill for a vet to have because not a lot of vets know how to work with rodents properly. Um, you There's also labs that work with dogs, cats, um, monkeys, Technically, there's not a lot of labs out there that work with monkeys anymore, so it'd be pretty hard to get into one. I'm trying to think of other common lab animals, maybe a guinea pig, fish, there's a lot of fish. So there's a lot of animal opportunities in science also. And working in a neuroscience program specifically, you can learn a lot about animal behaviors because that's all that we're studying. We're applying it to humans if it's able to be applied to humans, but if you're working in an animal model, you can obviously apply it directly to those animals. So that is all that I have to say about being a research technician. If you have any questions about being a research technician that maybe I didn't answer, you can definitely leave them in the comments down below. You've learned a lot of really useful skills being a technician. I've been able to apply a lot of the skills that I learned as a technician into my life as a graduate student. So you do learn a lot and it's a really useful experience. Not to mention, like I said, you get paid full time. So you should have all of the benefits that come along with being full time. I had healthcare whenever I was doing that and you should be being paid above a living wage. You should be able to have enough to live and also go and do things if you spend your money wisely. <laughs> if you spend your money like crazy, I can't promise that you'll have that much money because it's not that much. Um, but th that's one of the options for someone who wants to major in biology and doesn't know what in the world they could possibly do with it. I will be covering other things in this series. Uh, I have a few jobs in mind, but if you have any jobs that you're interested in that you would like to hear more about, also please leave that down below. I will definitely try to get to jobs that you guys request specifically first because I want to help you. You're also welcome to ask me any questions on social media. They'll all be here as well as my email address. Feel free to email future topics, future things that you would like to hear from me. This channel is called Ask a Neuroscientist. Please ask me questions. Bye.